<laughs> Melting sea ice in the Arctic is changing the face of our planet in our lifetime. We could see a phenomenon that has not happened since the end of the last ice age, the opening of an ocean. Last night, 60 Minutes explored what this evolving landscape could mean for mankind. Lester Stahl spent, near the, spent time near the top of the world with pioneering researchers. In the command post at the ice camp. This is Sargo. They were tracking one of those subs that was preparing for a risky maneuver, punching upward through thick ice. We helicoptered to the site where they planned to surface, which was about seven miles from the base camp. A small force of men was preparing for the arrival of the sub. They drilled a hole in the three-foot thick slab of ice so they could lower an underwater telephone and a pinger or sonar device into the ocean to make contact with the sub. Balboa, this is Marvin Gardens. They were trying to direct the sub, codenamed Balboa, to a specific spot where the ice is flat and thin enough for it to surface without getting damaged. So the submarine is homing in on this pinger device. It's a beacon. And as it homes in, then it can, they can talk to us via the telephone. When a sub surfaces in the Arctic, they use shovels to carve a visual landmark in the ice that the sub can see. X literally marks the spot. But that X is a moving target because the ice is constantly drifting. There we go. Which makes maneuvering a windowless steel cylinder the size of a football field to such a pinpoint location seem impossible. But in this case, the skipper and his crew nailed it on their first try. It took a few minutes for the sail, the shark fin on top, to completely emerge. There they are. It's one of man's most sophisticated warships, the fast attack nuclear powered USS Hampton. They used a simple chainsaw and a couple of pickaxes to open the hatch. All the while, Navy divers stood sentry just in case the ice under our feet cracked. Leslie Stahl is here with us now. Leslie, good morning. Morning. Was this scary? No. It wasn't. It was too beautiful to be scary. <laughs> yeah, the video is amazing. And uh, I was surrounded you, by the U.S. Navy. Yeah, and, I, they and, weren't nervous. They weren't afraid. You just got the message. But you seemed to be surprised there for a moment when there was a break. Oh, you know what? They'd already kicked us out. Uh, so the cracks formed in, in the camp where we were living, and they did an emergency evacuation. Right. After I left, but our cameraman had stayed and got pictures. So they got those pictures. Yeah, emergency this... evacuation sounds scary. Yeah. Though, <laughs> I do. I know it's so. When you well, saw it, yeah. I didn't realize you were still there. I didn't say I shouldn't have been scared. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but the main story here is that the Russians are claiming the Arctic. Well, the Russians are building up uh, a military presence there. They've planted their flag under the North Pole, but they haven't crossed the line to actually declare. So as the general I interviewed said, they're just keeping that line right at, like a simmer on your stove mm -hmm. without actually having the flame go. And what are we doing in response? Yeah, is it a competition between us and them? Well, some people think it should be. Um, we are not overtly building up our military, but we're doing these exercises and we're doing a lot of science um, trying to figure out how you can live up there. A front line ready for its close-up, perhaps, then. Interestingly, in the, at the beginning of the piece, you also said, look, this is not a story about global warming. I was struck by the lack of interest in what it means for this ocean to be opening in the first place. Well, it's a given. I mean, it, the, the debate is over, and the U.S. military is doing what they're doing with that as an assumption. That's just a, fa a fact. So it's, it's melting. It's one reason the ice is moving nine miles a day while we were up there. Can you imagine? In all directions, not nine miles in one. It's swirling, really. And that's because the ice is melting so quickly that this ocean, they say that in the summer there will be totally free access uh, by 2030 in the summer. But some would say the melting ice is not a good thing in terms well. of the climate, and then others say that it's an economic and military opportunity. What do the people living there say? Well, uh, nobody lives there. No, but the, but the people that you were working with, what do um, they say? Well, look, it is a two-edged sword. There's all kinds of minerals hidden under the ice that could help the world, but in the United States, for instance, the sea level is going to rise. rise, and we're already seeing some of that. Mm -hmm. Great and floods. It's very scary for it's New York, scary. for Miami. Can I just say that, that I have never seen anything so beautiful in my entire life. Ice is alive. 
ice melts, it actually makes noise, it changes shapes, and it is breathtakingly beautiful. And there's such emotion that comes to a human being when they see breathtaking. So the cold didn't bother you? I thought it Yeah, was... it did, but not not so the, much that I could, couldn't you could feel it off. you could oh. feel it through yeah. the screen mm -hmm. <laughs> and the sun off the ice. The sun everything was beautiful, everything was harsh and difficult and the worst was my toes and oh. everybody else's toes. And yeah, no polar. <laughs> when you were bundled up <laughs> and no running beautiful water piece. by the way. Just think about yeah, that. I saw for that a toilet. <laughs> Leslie cute. Skull. No way to wash your face either. I Thank saw you. that. And remember Leslie's book Becoming Grandma on sale now. A great read. Thank a great read.